if we think of the four R's and that, you know, the right source we'll talk about first, and I just peripherally mention the four R's, but if we think about the sources, um, you have different options for different nutrient sources. And if you are choosing a certain typical nutrient source, let's say for sulfur, and it happens to be elemental sulfur, you now have the source that you're using, which is high analysis, low cost per unit of nutrient that your crop needs. Now you start to hive off that source and look at, okay, how am I going to apply it? What is good nutrient stewardship management for applying an elemental sulfur product? And that would be a fall broadcast unincorporated to allow the breakdown of the granule for further oxidation come the next spring if you have a winter break between crops. If you don't have a winter break before crops, i.e. your ground doesn't freeze like it does for us in the Northern Great Plains, then you can be making applications following your, your, first, your first crop and get the oxidation and the breakdown going there. So the fall application fits with the nutrient stewardship management of it's the good source, it's safe in the soil, it's not going to go anywhere, and the placement application and timing are broadcast in the fall for the best management. The rate we discuss in terms of what crop you're growing, are you soil testing, plant tissue analysis, the variability of sulfur in your field. Sulfur is extremely variable. Uh, you can't assume because you have a lot here, you've got a lot somewhere else. Crops that require season-long sulfur uh, nutrition benefit from an elemental sulfur application. So you have to think about that source that you're using and how it integrates with the placement and the timing and the rate. And the rate, you know, you look at the uptake for different crops, canola taking 0 0.5 to 0.7 pounds for a bushel, corn taking between 0.1 and 0.2 pounds, crop like soybeans taking between 0.3 and 0.4 pounds per bushel. At yields of 200 plus for corn, at yields of 50 to 70 in certain cases for soybeans, at yields of 50 to 70 for canola, these are some significant amounts of sulfur that are required. And if that sulfur is not season long available, or if it's been leached, or it's not being released through the mineralization of organic matter, you need to think in the context of a long-term elemental sulfur program that's always being added to your rotational sequence, that's always going to be releasing some for your current crop, there'll be leftover material to oxidize for future crops. So you get in the habit of, of starting a program with initial elemental sulfur and maybe looking at balancing that with ammonium sulfate to make sure that you have enough available sulfur for the season in the first year, but as you move into a full elemental program, year two, three, four, five, those repeated applications start to build up microbial community of the bacillus, the, the different bacteria that are oxidizers. So it alters and changes the microbial community to be fundamentally stronger for seeing elemental sulfur and breaking it down quicker. Thanks for, for listening. Really appreciate your interest. Uh, again, subscribe to the channel, get your questions in, future videos will try and answer what you need. If you want to have a discussion, all that type of stuff, easily to manage through Keg River TV. Take care and we'll see you again next time.